Right, this is probably going to be quite a long video and the first thing to say is that these are still a form that I'm working on and have in no way figured out so this is partly kind of me working it through and you're just coming along for the ride and um, I want to kind of show where my thinking's at with them. I was asked a little while ago by a friend to make a pipe as in to smoke something through um, because he lives in a country where it's legal, it's not in the UK. Um, and so I did a couple of tests and they're coming out okay, but I feel like it's a really nice thing to make. So I quite like to make more of them for sale if I'm gonna do this. But uh, there are some technical things. So what I started off with the idea of is I've basically thrown them like the narrow necked vases that I've thrown previously. Um, as you can see some chubbier than others, starting with around 200 grams of clay. Um, I'm getting better at throwing the shape, which helps, because um, it's not a shape that I throw often, or even I don't even throw any variations of narrow neck things as a, a kind of as the standard designs. Um, but there are a few kind of design things that people have pointed out to me, which is that the narrow, the neck this narrow is not particularly nice to smoke through because it's very harsh. You don't get much airflow, it comes through hot. Um, and these are quite short, uh, which they are, because they were the early ones when I was just getting the hang of the form. But it means that obviously it's quite close to your face when you light it. So, those are the first ones that I've thrown. Obviously it works with uh, Drippy Slip. Um, you can stamp the bowl directly into it, which is quite neat. And then this is the new glaze that I'm working on. Um, and then just so you can see, I'll show you each stage of the process now and then I'll show you them I'll work through a few of them and I'm going to throw a few I'm going to throw some of those designs and then I'm going to try throwing a few diff, slightly different shapes with different amounts of clay but um, so what I would do is throw a shape like that so you can see same sort of principle but a little bit bigger see this one is fully shrunk that one isn't um, I've thrown with just a fraction over 200 grams, so like 220. I wasn't weighing them out particularly precisely. So that's the difference in how much better I've got with the form plus an extra 20 grams of clay, um, but still with the quite narrow neck. Uh, and then this is one that's not finished yet, so I haven't drilled the holes and I haven't finished the base. I don't have a particularly good way of doing the base at the moment, but that's something I, I need to throw a chuck for them to sit in because obviously you can't trim them particularly well um, and I'm not sure that with the modifications it gets stamped and it gets um, all the things added to it I'm not sure a chuck will even do a particularly great job with it so at the moment I'm doing it in a slightly I, I don't like the way I'm doing it it's not that neat but um, I'll show you what that is in a second and then I do have a few that are now dry so you can see more finished base they've got this is a thing that i've added since that design you've had a flat bit to the back so they sit like that which is quite nice uh, and then the chamber and then you add a carb so you can let, let other air in um i've had mixed feedback about the positioning some people say that that's best because you can use it with either hand and it's comfortable some people say they hate it there so i I think that's probably personal preference and I don't know what a good standard would be. But all of that being said, what I'll do is I will throw one with 200 grams to warm up and then I will try a few different designs and what I'll probably do is just jump forwards in time so you can see the shape, uh, the shaping part of it because there's no point in showing you, me showing you centering each time. So maybe I'll do the first one all the way through and then afterwards I'll just jump around a bit and then I'll show you what I'm doing with the ones that uh, I threw yesterday and are now dry enough. So, 200 grams. Um, when I throw bigger versions of these kind of bulbous things, which obviously I don't do very often, but um, what I learned from the people who are good at them, like Matt Horn, if you've ever seen his work, he throws impossibly bulbous pieces with impossibly thin necks it's just 
ludicrous that anyone can manage that. But you use a heat gun to dry the bottom out before you try and narrow in the neck because you can't have something that wide tapering into something that small with clay that's still fairly wet. So I've always done them with a heat gun. Uh, these pieces I can throw quickly enough um, that I don't need the heat gun or haven't. But you probably will see in the video, I can't actually see it until I watch it back. But as I shape the neck, the bottom deforms a little bit. I don't feel it as I'm doing it because I'm working higher up. And it's not generally, although I've probably jinxed it now, it's not generally enough to um, ruin the piece because you can just rib it back to the shape you want once you're done. But, um, yeah, not having to dry your hands to go and get a heat gun is quite useful. So, what I try and do is throw 200 grams just basically as a thin cylinder. Should have the wall basically as thick as I want it at the bottom. And then the challenge at this point is to close it in. So, I put a finger inside and basically just circle the clay with my other hand and the second finger on this hand, it's hard to explain, but basically that finger is supporting from the inside to stop it from collapsing in, uh, while I pinch pressure with that hand and hook that part of that finger under as well and pull everything up. Um, I have this getting quite tatty, but I want to remake it, but uh, it's a decorating sponge, I don't know exactly, you can buy packs for, for not lots of money. This is great, it's a long, thin sponge. Longer and thinner than any of the specifically for getting water out of pots, sponges I've seen, so it's great for these sorts of things. It doesn't pick up as much water as this one, which is a specific pottery one, but obviously that one has a limit to what it will fit in. And then I've got quite a nice telescopic zine one, but far too big for this good for pots that are much bigger than any pots I can throw. Um, keep the outside of the clay quite wet, especially if you're throwing these quickly, you probably don't want to do that, you're going to take too long over them. Um, and as it gets narrower, you can up the wheel speed. Now, heading towards the point at which I can't fit my finger inside, which, so as I was saying about the narrow neck, you that might be a better thickness to leave it as but for the purpose of just showing you what I've been doing I'll show you the rest of what I've been doing which is I get one of the needle tools and I normally use a zine needle tool but they're hexagonal so they don't roll off so actually the cheap ones are better for this it's just a smooth thin like the, the bottom end of the handle it's perfect so I put that in and I use three points of contact on this hand, on my outside hand, to colour the clay in while pushing out with the needle tool. And the clay's getting a little bit dry, but I should be able to do this first. So I might just add a touch of water. But yeah, you can basically pull the clay up this as a supporting shaft in the middle and the next go a bit floppy so you have to be quite careful about how you disengage but there that is how I have been throwing them so now you've got a bulbous body with a skinny little neck. The neck um, is obviously just a fraction bigger than the cross section of that, which I would guess is kind of six mil. So like a drinking straw. So quite a good size if what you want is a pipe, like as in like a drinking pipe. Um, if what you want is the airflow to mix and for it to cool down, probably not ideal, um, which, you yeah. know, point to all the people who pointed out to me. I 
have very minimal experience of these in actual use. So um, these are based on observations rather than experience. And then all I do is try and support the neck so that that doesn't flop around. And then you can shape the lower part to be more rounded and bulbous. And that will be it. That's how I would leave it. So, that's 200 grams. I think that's too little clover though. It makes for a very um, pleasing weight because they're obviously quite light when they're trimmed and fired. Um, but if you want to have that narrow, sorry, if you want to have the, the length but you don't want to have that narrow stem, a lot of the height is coming from the narrowness of the stem. And without that being so narrow, you'd have to be able to throw it thinner, which, you know, would be a good thing. But 200 grams is not a lot of clay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt that same one with 300 grams and see how much longer I can get the neck. Um, I haven't tried this before. And then what I want to do is just see about repeating the shapes, but um, doing variations on a fatter neck. And so I think what I want to do kind of make a bulbous base and then a straight neck coming off it. A bit like that one, but um, she may be just that one with a fatter neck might be quite nice. There are going to be, the, the wider the neck is I think the more things I can do with it. So I haven't attempted it, but so you'll get to witness this as I do. But I can't see why if it's going to be a um, a wider neck, why I couldn't do a swirly one. So I might try that in a minute. So that's a bit, the old one was kind of like that high. I think that's going to be quite pleasing. See, there's a huge um, bulbous chamber to this one with still a skinny neck. And I assume that I'll have the same problems as the anything with skinny neck. But maybe not. Maybe. That avoids it, I don't know. Anyway, so that's 300 grams. Now you're getting kind of a decent size relative to a hand. Um, so I will jump ahead in time. So a 250 gram one in a different design. Oh, and also, I don't think I'm being careful enough. You've got to be quite careful when carrying these around with the floppy necks. Because when you take them off the wheel, in case anyone's wondering, Hartley and Noble Russian doll bat system using the medium inserts, um, which are great for something like this because obviously they don't take that much space when you're throwing on bats, but um, yeah, you've got to be a bit careful when you carry it around because that neck, if, as you lean it to put it down, um, the neck flops over a bit. And then if you're going to have 
neck looks a bit fatter. The way I've seen people do it is you make a you colour in oh, that core. I'm trying not to put water on the inside of the neck. Um, because obviously it goes down to the bottom and once I close in the neck I can't get it back out again. And you don't want a pool of water in the inside of your piece. So I'm letting the inside be drier than I would like and this clay is a bit grabby. Um, a bit more like porcelain. doesn't like to be dry. Okay, so what I was thinking is can I do a sort of swirly neck? Now I don't think I could do the full swirly design. But sort of. And now what I need to do is colour that in to make a mouthpiece. quite a high risk of uh, running it. What I want to do is leave all the wobbliness as something that I can trim back with a needle tool once it's dry and I'll show you that on some other pieces in a sec but I think that might work. Because you can either needle it off now, which um, might be might be worth needling it off sooner. But once you get a, um, once you've got a wobble and you're already down to quite a thin bit of clay, the needling will almost certainly ruin the piece. It always catches, you can't get it off cleanly, it's generally a disaster. So you either need to do it sooner, or not at all, in my opinion, or you have to needle quite a lot off. You can, if you go down where it's a bit thicker, you're okay, but if you try and take off a small amount of thin clay, not going to work. But if you leave them to dry on the back, as I'm intending to do, um, you can come back tomorrow, it's already centred. Uh, and it's the right level of dryness that you can just cut it off and then it's okay. So, so long as you leave the clay in such a way that um, that's going to work, which I think that will do. Um, I don't particularly like the shape of this one. I think the other ones are significantly more pleasing to look at, but if the verdict is that um, they're unpleasant to use, then there's a, a good argument for doing it a different way. Okay, jump forwards in time again, and I think I'm going to make this one um, similar, but not swirly. Because actually, uh, uh, I'll just I'll talk about that in a second. So, do this one, it's a fairly boring design, but what I will do, I think, is have a straight, fatter neck, so just bring the clay up a fraction, and then I can do the impulse style dots the length of the neck, which I think will be a really nice design and kind of makes use of the extra surface without needing any ornamentation on it. So again, I've got to try and close this in such a way that 
I can just needle it off. I think that will probably do. And then try and make that shape that you like. So what I'm going to do tomorrow is cut that top bit off. Um, because there's a slight wobble in it and rather than try and fix it now I can leave it. Not entirely happy with the way I'm throwing these, but um, well, no, I say I'm not entirely happy. I'm not happy at all. This isn't this isn't what I'm good at. Assuming I'm good at anything, well outside um, my comfort zone, and I'm making these up as I go. Narrow neck things are very awkward, and to be honest, if you're not used to colouring in, like I'm much better at this than I used to be. The first time I tried anything with a narrow neck or any colouring in at all, I ruined it every single time I tried it. Um, so I'm kind of amazed how few of these I've ruined, to be honest. It's so easy if the clay gets even a fraction less even when you colour it in you just exacerbate it and exacerbate it um, and yeah I wouldn't have been able to do this even this time last year I think so I've definitely got better but that doesn't mean I'm good that really doesn't mean I'm good much of the people who are good at throwing forms like this and um, it looks, they can throw something ten times the size and still have more control over it than I can something relatively small. So I'm going to try, no, oh, this is a little talked, I mean, too hard. Because this, is, this video has been going on a while, uh, the clay has been sat around for a while. And I think I'm now treating these balls the way I could the first one, probably more aggressively because once I'm warmed up. Anyway, I'm so sure. No, I'm not being careful enough and I kind of ruined this one away. So, I've ruined that piece and that makes it a good candidate for seeing what the wall fitness is like. Oh, for fuck's sakes. This piece just does not want to cooperate on any level. Right. You can kind of see there, so a bit of extra chunk in the bottom, uh, fairly thin if you ignore where I popped up the wiring there, and fairly even wall through the neck, so actually that would have been okay if it had been okay. Right, I think. I'm going to try one more shape, this time with 300 grams, and then I'm going to turn off this recording. Because I can't, I don't think I'm adding anything at this point. And there's no point in trying to stick a ball of clay to a bat that's saturated. A little bit of water helps, a lot of water does not.
it changes the proportions. And I mean, not that I have a problem with it if that's your thing, but these are all just a little bit too phallic for my liking. They're fine until you collar in the tip. And then it just hopefully once I've trimmed it a bit neater, um, it won't be quite so bad. <laughs> or I just sell them to people who are into that sort of thing. That's also fine. Okay, so that'll do for this section, now trimming those ones. Right, I'll show you quickly how I deal with these the next day once they have firmed up a bit. So this is actually possibly on the dry side of leather hard, which might be a touch too far. But start by chopping off the top with the needle tool. And this is dry and will be ideal. And then I'll shape the top. I've got one of these, uh, I think call it shark's tooth, but it's the T9 diamond cords tools. And I love this for trimming inside things because it's such a conveniently pointy shape. So I use this on the rims of my mugs now. You can basically remove a lot of the clay. Well, I say a lot of the clay. You can thin all the walls down just a touch, make the whole thing lighter. Um, and because it's still attached to the bat, I mean, those of you who've watched more of my stuff will know I do this with just about everything. So throw it, leave it on the bat. Um, and then you have access to trim down surfaces, which will be quite difficult if you didn't trim them down now. So if you wired it off, you'd be trimming it upside down, or you'd have to reattach it to the wheel and get it centered. Whereas, if you just leave it on the back, which you can do with something like these Hartley and Noble ones, um, and it makes the whole process much easier. Now, they're going to be, because of their awkward shape, they're going to be very difficult to trim down. You can't just turn them on their head like you could something like a mug. Um, that ring a little bit more because actually that's not the problem. Yeah, so basically, you want to do as much of the trimming as you possibly can this way up, which uh, thankfully you can do, but you kind of need a, some sense of how thick you've thrown the wall because, unlike a mug where I can reach my finger inside and do a comparison, these are you know, you've got to guess, but if you know how thick you threw it, then you've got a pretty good guess. So I'm going to say that I have trimmed off, broadly speaking, enough there. I will burnish smooth. Then what I want to do is actually, I should have done this first. I just want a laser that shines across the center of the wheel. there and then what I can do is I can line up with the uh, the pins on the wheel which is always worth doing because these have a round hole and a slot so they can slide as the wood expands which means if you do it in any other direction you won't be guaranteed that it's perfectly centered whereas if you line up with the pins you will be and just want to put a dot put 
the dock. And the reason for that is that I am going to, oh well actually I showed you on the previous one. So I flattened the back on the opposite side to the kind of all the, the, the important bit so it will sit that's it. It sits on that shelf, but you obviously want that to be directly opposite the hole. So I'm going to stamp the hole and then I know where I need to stamp the back. And uh, I have found, so I'm using the same pebble that I use for my pebble designs. So it's a nice pebble. And basically what you want to do is roll the pressure. If you're going to stamp anything, um, if you just ram it into the clay, then um, what you're asking is for clay to deform all at once, which requires a lot of force and then you just collapse the piece. If you roll the pressure around, you're applying pressure on a very small amount of area. So I'll show you what I mean a bit better. Um, I don't know, actually, I'll go 45 degrees. Hopefully this will be a good demonstration. But you basically roll the stone like that. The same is true if you're using one of the grinding bits that I use for Peacock Eye or any stamping tool. If you roll it around, the pressure is focused on a single point, and then eventually the pebble kind of sinks into the point that it is touching on all sides, uh, just because it's making a big dip. But that seems to be a good size. Right, and then what I want to do. I could probably do them both while they're attached, but I haven't tried it that way. Um, and I think just the shape of the other two will make this part easier. But, um, wire off. So, um, wire off, and then I'm going to use my logo stamp, the back of it. Um, when I got this from Laser Cuts, it's attached to this nice wooden handle, and the back of that is rounded. So what I could do is the same thing, but rather than giving me a uh, divot like that, it will give me a more or less flat surface, which I then flatten completely. But centre it on the mark and then just roll the pressure around. And you can see how that's starting to flatten out. Um, and you can then test it to see, firstly, if uh, that's slightly off centre, so I need to go slightly that way but see if it's got the balance, which if you're coming about that far up, then you've kind of got the, the foot will have more mass in it and then that's got more leverage. So you can assume that's going to be about right. Um, which way do I want to go? So I want to flatten more around that side. So yeah, just check these things as you go. But basically if you're rolling the pressure around, you should end up with a nice, just a flat section and then that will sit the whole thing will sit like that um, and that's it that's all you need to do for this stage um, so yeah trim trim down and then wire off and either stamp before or after depending on how you're doing it uh, the other one I will record if I've got enough battery for it I might actually skip ahead um, so the final stage is what you do once it's dry enough to drill um, and I am currently using I, a 4mm drill bit for the, uh, the whole hole and then a 5mm drill bit for the carb because the carb is there to let air in let you control the airflow so either it comes through what you're smoking or you get fresh air in um, the carb can be bigger the this hole needs to not let anything through unless you're going to put a, some form of mesh filter on so four mil once it's shrunk and then been glazed that will drop down to more like three mil which as i understand it's a fairly good size but i didn't see anything that specified exactly it's just something in that sort of ballpark so actually that laser back on um, what you can do is find center that's about center 
Oh, and then with placement for the carb, you can either go straight above it or go to one side and you could go round to the side or to the side and up. If you just kind of try and think how you're going to hold the thing when you're holding it. So I would have thought either above and you do that or there and you'd use this finger. Something like that would do. So bigger drill bit, I'm going to go there for this one. Drill bits are great for cutting the smaller holes. Um, if you're cutting a big hole, the kind of the cut tube hole cutters are quite good. But for drilling holes, it's more precise to use a drill bit, I think. And what I do is drill them out. And didn't bring it over. But use a countersinking bit and you want the clay to be dry enough that this cuts. If it squishes the clay, the clay is too soft, just leave it and it will dry out. Um, but that should give you a really neat mitre on both of them, so it just rounds the edge but in a very neat way. Um, and then once it's dried out a bit more, then you can use like a needle tool or something to just neaten up the inside of the hole because you don't really want the burr firing and you can knock it off once it's basically bone dry if you're careful about it um, and then glaze them however you oh and the bottom so all i'm doing at the moment for the bottom is i'm literally just making an outer ring by carving away at the inside and then smoothing it with a sponge which is very low tech and not how i want to be doing it but um it works and what you really want is for it to sit on its foot and um, work and given that I can't see a good way to trim without making I mean maybe with a chuck you could do it but you kind of you with this you'd basically be gripping it there in the chuck so there's a lot of weight above and I've never found chucks, loose chucks that grip halfway up a piece, in my experience, don't work very well. But um, there is an art to making good chucks and it's not something I do often. So if you do, you can probably do a better job than I can. But yeah, just, this clay's a little on the dry side now, so um, it's splintering, but basically just want to neaten it up. The nice thing with this clay is it's very smooth. So once I've done that, basically just put it on a sponge. And um, if you've got a very groggy clay, this won't work so well. Because you, you wipe the clay off and leave the grog behind. But on a smooth clay, you can just smooth it out. And then, if you're a bit careful, you can burnish it back to smooth but it can highlight where it's not smooth so yeah it's basically like that and that would now sit stably on that foot stably ish on that foot and once you've kind of finished um, rounding that off if you just squash it onto a flat surface that should help squash any high points so sit stably there sit stably there um, and that's pretty much it. So glazing, um, I'll do a separate video on that because I haven't figured that one out perfectly yet, but that's more or less it. Oh, the other one is obviously, this is a drippy slippy piece. So I won't bother showing you, I've got videos. Um, I'll just edit those in.
What I do is I neaten the piece up, I add the slip, drip it down, set it aside. Next day, then I stamp with the pebble and stamp the back because obviously you're adding a lot of liquid to it. You can stamp first and then add the slip, then the slip drips into the hole, that works quite well. Um, but if you want the hole to be full of colour, continuous colour like this one is, then um, stamping after the slip's firmed up is the way to go. And that, I believe, is that. Quite a long video, but hopefully there's something useful in there. I mean, it's still a process I'm figuring out, but I've learned a few things over the iterations I've done so far, and I'll do a follow-up video once I've got it absolutely finalised and know exactly how I'm making them, but probably broadly how I showed it here. I can't imagine I'm going to change too much. Um, so yeah, hopefully that was useful.